Catholic Drive Time with Joe McLean and Emily Alcaraz. What is going to change with the incoming Biden presidency? Teresa, are you here? Praise be to Jesus Christ in all things. Uh, Teresa Kamara is on with us. She is uh, our in-house pro-life resident, uh, consultant, and contributor. Teresa, good morning to you. Thank you for being a part of our program. Well, it's great to be here. Praise be to Jesus Christ. Teresa, uh, lots to to talk about in the headline news today. Uh, It's a concerning situation when you have to see the pro-life march canceled after, I guess it's been decades when was the last time there wasn't a pro-life march in dc do you have any idea so actually the pro-life march in dc um the march for life is going virtual so it's not canceled canceled but people cannot be there in person unless you're specifically invited i know uh Jeannie mancini with um march for life um actually had a great interview on there that you can look up on their facebook page along with um christine hawkins with Students for Life of America, and they're getting out the word of how you can be involved online as they invite people that are pro-life leaders from all over the nation to actually be present as much as possible and to get the word out. So there's a lot of uh, groups that are going virtual. So, um, However, this will be the very first virtual one. They did start physically marching in person the very first year after Roe v. Wade was passed. So wow. the horrific decision of Roe v. Wade um, – was handed down by the Supreme Court, sweeping out the abortion laws throughout the nation. There were all these protections that were in various states. There was actually, abortion was first legalized, believe it or not, Joe, um, in Hawaii and in New York back in 90, in, in, sorry, in 69. Mm. And so um, this whole, but this ruling from Roe v. Wade actually imposed abortion on the on the nation. And so that is one of the reasons it's terrific. So um, fortunately, the, mar- the very first march, uh, led by Nellie Gray was out there and um, that first year and um, I have to say um, with uh, great love and, and admiration for for someone that is very dear to me she actually had an abortion um, on that on that day and she turned on her TV and she saw the first march for life wow. and she is now thank God pro-life um, and her son is amazing. He's a priest. That that then her next son that was born, and he is super involved in the pro life movement. Comes out to pray with us every week. She's on. Uh, she's super actively pro life with Silent No More, and so she shares her story. So I, I I'm gonna leave her name <laughs> vague, but just because I didn't talk to her beforehand. But she does come out publicly to talk about this. So um, we do see the conversions happening. And we see that conversion happening in many ways through the power of prayer. So while on the 29th, um, there is that um, going virtual. There isn't a push from live action with Lila Rose and Sean Carney with 40 Days for Life International to have people go out to your abortion facilities. If you really want to be present, go out to your abortion facilities and pray peacefully, pray and just focus in on prayer for an end to abortion because we know prayer is what is converting hearts. And we're seeing that in the, in, you know, over 18,000 babies that have been saved internationally um, in the Houston alone and um, we've seen over 9,000 so we encourage you to, to look at um, live actions uh, web page and and get connected with those groups that will that are registering they do have a list out of locations where people will be praying now the last I looked at that particular location they did not have Houston we are actually praying on the 23rd so if you are wanting to come out this Saturday we're part of the Texas Rally for Life, which is also virtual, and we will be out there on the 23rd. However, you don't have to wait till then. So today, today is the very first day of the nine days for life, um, which is um, the information being put out by the USCCB with a prayer, reflection, information about, you know, just reminding people of how to be involved. Because as like you were talking about, Joe, in the last segment, um, we need to be looking at what the U.S. CCB is actually saying about the pro-life movement. And it's great. I'm so thrilled um, with Bishop Gomez's, which, are, which are Archbishop Gomez's letter t- about President Biden. Mm. Um, I think that that is going to help tremendously. And I think all the catechists 
everywhere need to be tied into what is the pro-life moving, movement saying. Because while, while we are, and what, um, specifically what the Church is teaching about the dignity of the human person, because there's so much to our faith that sometimes it's like, oh, you'll hear catechists say, well, why do we have to focus in on the pro-life movement? Like, why is that important? This is their season to do that, because we need to focus on the dignity of the human person that is central to our Catholic faith. Faith. Yeah, and so it, so this is a great opportunity. So so I hope all the catechists will get on that USCCB's website, be t- sending out the nine days for life. Connect with your archdiocese or with your diocese and look for your respect life program because you can connect. So yeah, we're talking with Teresa. I, I said this, a question. We're talking with <laughs> Teresa Kamara from HoustonCoalition.com about the pro life news for the week, and you know, uh, there's a couple of things here I wanted to jump into uh, in, yeah. into. With you, Teresa Kamara, if I can get it out of my mouth first, but I was surprised. Uh, there was a stack of executive orders that President Biden signed yesterday, like 17. Yeah. And I went through yeah. this list. I was having a uh, initially I was having a hard time finding the list. We finally were able to track them down under whitehouse.gov forward slash briefing room. Um, you can find the list there. And I was surprised. I mean, there's some stuff here that I was really didn't I was really appalled by, uh, for instance, uh, requiring there's an executive order here requiring that non-citizens be included in the census so that uh, when they figure out how much representation each state needs in, in Congress, non-citizens are also included in the count, which inflates the number, by the way. Uh, so that is an executive order he signed yesterday. But one he didn't sign, I was surprised that it wasn't the, one of the first uh, executive orders he signed, was the reversing of the Mexico City Policy. Now, I'm told that that's mm-hmm. still coming, but I was surprised to not see it on the first day. Did that catch you off guard? Um, I was actually very surprised that I didn't see anything that was a more direct attack on the, you know, on the rights of the unborn, on the health of women. Um, and um, I, I was very surprised to see um, nothing that had Planned Parenthood somewhere stamped on there because it feels like Planned Parenthood was somehow stamped all over their their running and, you know, the, the history, the long history um, of growing focus for Biden. I mean, he was not always, he was not always super pro-abortion. So like back in 77, he actually voted against federal funding for the cases of, of of Medicaid paying for abortion, um, except for ca- cases of rape and incest. So he was he was against the expanding of that, and um, he now has been very much promoting. Like he kind of rode on the coattails of President Barack Obama, who was very much promoting abortion, and then he chose a a vice president who has been has directly gone after crisis pregnancy centers with her fact back back in uh, 2015 um, in California that that directly went after pro-life uh, crisis pregnancy centers and uh, could have shut them down. And he, and she also went after David Delighton, uh, who had exposed Planned Parenthood and the illegal activities that were very clearly stated in their own words. And then, so she started the ball rolling in that. And so the fact that he has, he has tremendously headed toward a pro-abortion type stance while claiming to be practicing Catholic, um, just a really, it really surprised me. And it was kind of a relief, um, in those first 17 executive orders. I, I don't know how long it's going to last though, mm. especially with having the influence of his vice president and the cabinet members that he has been choosing and those he has chosen to surround himself with. One thing though, that he has definitely, um, promoted immediately, um, to the detriment of his professing the Catholic faith um, ha, is the fact that he's been promoting LGBTQ uh, oh, yeah. issues and and even like who he has appointed. And so it's very important for people to keep in mind like the the importance of the pro-life movement is very easy to explain in the sense of um, there is a child whose life is at stake. There's an innocent person whose life is at stake. And there is a mother whose life is at risk. Um, as I talked about just, you know, two weeks ago, I picked up another 911 call, you know, locally where a woman had to be, was going to uh, need special life support because she had a complication. She was hemorrhaging after an abortion. Um, and this is not 
uncommon. And um, Missouri City, uh, the Missouri, uh, sorry, and so in Missouri, their their abortion facility closed down because of the women who were being harmed by the abortion, by the you know uh, problems that happened during their abortion. So. Um, it's, it's critical for people to keep in mind, this is a woman's issue. This is a child, this is the, an issue around the child, but there's also a pre, a, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? It is the subsequent results Mm. of mis, um, mismanagement, if you will, of self-control and a lack of chastity, a lack of understanding healthy relationships. And so we really are going to need to hone in on the importance of healthy family life, healthy marriages. And yes, we need to make sure as we're doing that, we have to be very careful that for those who who are separated from their spouse or who do have children out of wedlock, you know, for various reasons, like they're still important. And All right, hold that thought there. We're talking about the pro-life news across the nation and uh, and its impact on on society around us and our time and our day. And one of the big news stories that came out this week was the uh, the passing of Joe Scheidler. Uh, Teresa yeah. Kamara, maybe you can tell us why that's a significant loss for the pro-life movement. So Joe Scheidler was one of the amazing, uh, trailblazing heroes that um, people around the nation and even around the world potentially, you know, because he visited countries outside the U.S. as well and, and worked with them, um, he was a trailblazer for the pro-life movement. Um, so while there are definitely things that have been developed over time, as we have learned from mistakes, as we as we found what worked, what didn't work, Joe was amazing in the sense that he was able to to really move forward with courage and and expand um, our understanding. He was an author. He um, was able to start the pro- founder of the Pro-Life Action League, and he did just pass away on the uh, on January 18th, which was Martin Luther King Day. So, um, And he actually marched with Martin Luther King um, back, I believe it was 65, um, and so, yeah, he, so he actually had been involved immediately after Roe v. Wade began, um, part-time as he, as he worked with his job, he continued his work, uh, in, in, uh, public affairs and his boss encouraged him. He was like, he was very supportive of hit that. And he also then said, you know, you should do this full-time. And so he began, um, pro-life action league in the eighties, uh, and actually in 1980s. So, um, he also um, was very in- influential in, in the work that I've done um, mm. in the sense that uh, he would have these meet the abortionist conferences. And I have to say that really formed my understanding of being able to see the workers as, you know, as people who maybe wanted to do the right thing and were misled. So a, a lot of people are seeing that with Unplanned, the movie. Um, Joe Shiler was already doing that with Meet the Abortionist. So um, wow. I would refer people to um, um, prolifeaction.org forward slash converted, where he has eight people that are lined up, uh, including Abby Johnson, including that we know uh, from abortionworker.com and from her her various pro-life work in other areas as well. Um, and then um, it includes Sue Thayer, who we now know through 40 Days for Life International, um, pretty well around the world. I mean, and then we also now have, um, but I, one of my favorites actually, as far as their testimony, was John Burchowski. And he specifically said, I'm going to quote, intercessory prayer and intercessory suffering and sacrifices are key to conversion. Wow. And he explains how he himself, um, even though he had never met the Shilers, he knows that through that prayer and that intercessory prayer that that helped bring about his conversion and that he was standing on the shoulders of giants as he spoke about it and shared his, his testimony of how he, as an ob wanted to be the best ob he could be. And so he thought that would mean you do everything that's possible, that's available to you. You can offer the full range of services. And when he recognized the life of the child in the womb, he was horrified with what he had done and he ended up opening up a cri- uh, like a crisis pregnancy type OB-GYN practice 
uh, called Tepiac. And so now he's offering medical services as a pro-life OB-GYN wow. to women who are in high needs. And so like we have in, in these high needs situations. And so, you know, it's, it's important to keep in mind that while things can look like absolutely things can look absolutely crazy right now as far as the riots and the, and the shutting down and having to be virtual and we can feel isolated. And even as we're standing out on the sidewalk and we're six feet apart and we're masked up and we're like, I can't see the person next to me who's six feet from me, but we're all still unified together in prayer. And even if for some reason you have a health reason that keeps you from coming out, you're unified in this family of faith in this family of the church that we're able to connect through, through the radio, through the webinars, I recommend TexasRallyForLife.org if you want to join Houston and, and all of us in Texas. But, like, there's you can join, like I said, the Archdiocese of Galveston. Houston has, has very specific um, structured events that are going to last all through uh, the 23rd. And so, you know, get, check out where, where your diocese is and, and don't feel like you have to be isolated because this is a movement that is of love and of prayer and of giving practical aid through resources like optionline.org for women that are in crisis, mm. um, a, a healing after abortion, um, dot com if they're post-abortive and they're looking for healing because we don't want them to go through another abortion. Um, we don't want to forget them or make them feel like they can't come back into the faith because sure. God wants our conversion where we're at. You know, abortionworker.com for the workers to come out. And so there are these resources. Um, so I hope I hope these pro-life Amen. leaders will, will continue to make their voices heard. <laughs> I'm just seeing a, a news article here uh, from LifeSiteNews.com. Uh, it says, uh, yeah. this was uh, Michael Haynes is the person who wrote this article. We'll link to it, Facebook.com forward slash Catholic Drive Time. You can check it out there. But it says, the Biden presidential inaugural committee has listed mm-hmm. Planned Parenthood and uh, other uh, LGBTQ organizations as the beneficiaries of any donations made for the flags, which took place, uh, uh, which took the place of spectators on the National Mall. So because there was no, uh, there were no crowds there, there was only a select few that had been personally invited, other than the 25,000 National Guard troops who had nothing to oppose, apparently. Uh, the flags there that we all saw in the video yesterday, um, those donations that came in for those flags all went to Planned Parenthood and some of these LGBTQ organizations. You know, and again, it goes back to that letter from Archbishop Jose Gomez as to mm-hmm. why, uh, you know, as a Catholic, these are important. And, and, he, and Joe Biden knows this, uh, Nancy Pelosi and the rest. They know this, mm-hmm. and yet they choose of their own free will to ignore the fundamental teachings. And it's not because it's a Republican or conservative issue. It's because it's a right issue. It's a right or wrong. It has nothing to do with right mm-hmm. or left. And I just want to want to reemphasize this portion of Archbishop Jose Gomez's letter, which we did link to. It says, uh, so I must point out that our new president has pledged to pursue certain policies that would advance moral evils and threaten human life and dignity most seriously in the areas of abortion, contraception, marriage and gender of deep concern is the liberty of the church and the freedom of believers to live according to their consciences. It's an excellent statement from Archbishop Jose Gomez, and I really and and truthfully pray for President Joe Biden and for his reversion uh, of heart and mind and thought in regards to these these very fundamental and and important issues um, that I I know that he's made big, huge promises to people like Planned Parenthood over the next four years. And um, I think we're going to be seeing that. I certainly hope we don't, though. Uh, Teresa Kamara, we got about a couple minutes. Yeah, so one of the things, if people are thinking that Biden is kind of a laid back (laughs) in any shape or form, I mean, it's important to keep in mind, it didn't stop with a 2003 vote for his vote for partial birth abortion. Um, So it's, it's important to keep in mind, like that child is going to, is, is being killed part out, partly out of the womb. So, um, and it's, it's a horrific practice that, you know, you, if you see models, a lot of people are like, I don't even want to see that image because it makes my stomach turn. Well, good. It should make your stomach turn uh, because that means you have a conscience that's well formed and that you, your instincts, even if you're not, you know, forming your conscience per se, which you should be as Catholics. But I mean, even if your conscience isn't formed on a natural level, that should wrench our gut. That should make us not feel well, but we don't want to have, but we don't carry those graphic 
uh, pictures out to the abortion facility because that's not where the appropriate place is yeah. for them Amen. to be used. Amen. So, but fortunately, what we, what we can use that is appropriate and is within our church, um, talk, we can look at, um, we're going to be looking a lot to Archbishop Vigoron, um, Vice President of the USCCB, as he works with um, a committee of chairmen to specifically address this committee and was formed in, in November of 2020 specifically to address concerns and confusions right. that can come up because president elect Joe Biden at the time um, was we are um, we're out of time Teresa. Catholic. I'm so sorry to have yes. to cut you off but that's my job well, as the host to do the dirty work <laughs> yeah. and uh, God bless you Teresa Kamar HoustonCoalition.com thanks for giving us the pro-life news update for the week we're very grateful we'll look forward to having you back soon I look forward to talking with you again, too. All right. Praise be to God. That's going to do it for Hour 1 of Catholic Drive Time, uh, keeping you informed and inspired. We hope that you are able to join us in the second hour. You can do so uh, on our live video streams, facebook.com forward slash Catholic Drive Time. You can also find us on YouTube and Twitter as well. You can search for us there, Catholic Drive Time. We'd love to have you a part of our program. We'll have more breaking news and stories, Saint of the Day, Gospel Day, our favorite, fan favorite, trivia game show, plus so much more. Join us then. God love you. God bless you. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning. Thank you for joining us on Your Catholic Drive Time, where it is our pleasure to keep you informed and inspired. Join us Monday through Friday at the same time, right here on your favorite Catholic radio station. Don't forget to connect with us. Just go to facebook.com forward slash Catholic Drive Time. Again, that's facebook.com forward slash Catholic Drive Time. Be sure to share more than just us today. Share Jesus with everyone you meet. Bye now, and God love you.